Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Karthik Balakrishnan. And I'm Tracy McRae. Sprains and strains are common injuries that share similar signs and symptoms, but they involve different parts of your body. A sprain is a stretching or tearing of ligaments, and ligaments are the tough bands of fibrous tissue that connect two bones together in your joints. A strain is a stretching or tearing of a muscle or a tendon, and tendons are the fibrous cords of tissue that connect muscles to bones. I don't like either one of them. Not, not a bit. <laughs> Mild sprains and strains can be successfully treated at home, but more severe sprains and strains might require surgery to repair torn ligaments, muscles, or tendons. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Christopher Camp. Welcome to the program, Dr. Camp. It's great to meet you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Great to meet you guys as well. How can we tell if a sprain or a strain is severe enough to have to go into the doctor? Sure. A couple things. In we commonly see in patients too they'll say i knew something was wrong and so i really think patient intuition is an extremely powerful thing so usually patients have pretty good insight into it initially so if there's any question how do you, how do you feel do you feel like this is something that may get better within a day or two most commonly it does occasionally it doesn't and a lot of patients will know and usually if it's not going to there'll be some other hallmarks or signs so Take a rotator cuff, for instance, one of the most common. Somebody has a mild sprain or strain of the rotator cuff, usually within a few days, they'll be able to move their arm, pain's getting better. However, sometimes a more severe one, unable to lift the arm, severe pain, that's actually getting worse rather than better. So if it, if it looks like things are headed in the wrong direction, probably need to see somebody. Is one worse than the other, or should people be more worried about one than the other? Uh, not necessarily. I think both, uh, the vast majority of both sprains and strains can be treated without surgery. Um, but again, a lot do require surgery. But I don't think one necessarily needs to be um, more worrisome or concerning than the other. And again, I think the same logic applies too. So you kind of base, base your, whether or not you present to the physician based on your symptoms, either one. So I don't think it's up to the patient to have to try to decide, oh no, is, it, is this a ligament structure or a tendon structure or a muscular structure? They don't really have to worry with that. I think it's more based on how their symptoms are. What's the most common sprain? I imagine that it's an ankle, but is that the fact? It really depends on the, the activity level and the demographics of patients, yes. So ankle sprains, absolutely high on the list. And then it really kind of depends. So if we look at our kind of weekend warriors, maybe folks somewhere in the 50 to 70 year old age range, we see a lot of rotator cuff problems ah. there. In our younger patients, maybe in the 30 to 50 year old range, we see a lot of knee issues there. So common knee sprains, patellar tendonitis or patellar tendon sprains, those are extremely common as well. So it really kind of depends on the age activity level. In our higher end athletes that are out there competing competitively, high school, professional sports, um, th those folks tend to have a lot of hamstring strains or, mm -hmm. or larger muscle sprains as well. Uh, I was going to say, and then finally about the klutzes in the room, we get ankle sprains because yeah. that's me. Yeah, yeah. I've been there too. <laughs> but I've been I'm, there. Yeah. But it feels like it never, it was just a random sprain, but it feels like it never really healed the same way. So how, this is, I wish that I could go back in time and yeah. treat that sprained ankle differently than I did. Sure. And it's true. And we actually see some of it. And I bet if you had an MRI now, there may be evidence of old injury that you may have had. Mm -hmm. 5, 10, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So e even though a lot of these will heal on their own, they don't always heal completely normally, unfortunately. And that can be the case with or without surgery. So even sometimes after surgery, long term, you can still see some evidence of prior injury there. So really the thought is we want it, we want the sprain or strain to heal as best that it can. And then the, re the really the goal of rehabilitation and therapy is to strengthen all of the muscles around the joint. So even if that ligament or tendon is not doing its normal function, all of the muscles can kind of compensate for it and, and help it out a little bit. So is that the main mistake that people make when it comes to something that's been sprained is that they don't rehabilitate it correctly? Correct. And I think one of the biggest things is oftentimes people, after having an injury, your attention is drawn to that area of the body. So people be really dedicated early on and do a lot of therapy and a lot of strengthening. But in reality, you probably had that injury because of some abnormal movement or some sort of weakness somewhere in your body. So you're gonna to continue to be predisposed and have an increased risk for those down the road unless you can correct those problems. So really, w once you have an injury like that, if it's severe enough, it can be a new lifelong relationship you have with that joint that you always just kinda of have to stay fit, 
keep it strong, keep it stable, and then be smart about your activity. So is there things that we can do to prevent these from happening? Absolutely. So I think the, the, the places we see folks get into the most trouble, really probably two areas. One is starting a new activity that you haven't done previously. And that, that doesn't necessarily have to be a sport or a new thing in the gym. It can be just that you've been inside all winter, spring comes, and now you're outside in the yard and you decide you're going to you know, work for 10, 12 hours on a Saturday. So your body's not ready for that. You're not used to that. So for those type of activities, you just kind of be careful, ease into it, maybe start out, you know, don't do 12 hours of yard work on the first Saturday of spring, you know, start, start out light, start out easy, and then kind of gradually get into it or go into the gym, maybe get in shape and get ready for it ahead of time. The other that we see are the overuse injuries. So a lot of people who are extremely motivated, probably more motivated than I am, exercise very religiously every day, and they tend to do one type of exercise every day. So we have a lot of folks that just love to run and they run miles and miles and miles every single day or the cyclist who loves to cycle every single day. And sometimes all of the exercise is great. Overuse can be a problem. So for those folks, I try to say, just mix it up. So mix in a few days of running, mix in some swimming, mix in some cycling, find other ways to to keep your body active and keep moving to avoid those overuse injuries. Let's also uh, add in strains here because you mentioned for maybe high school and college athletes that mm-hmm. the hamstrings, um, low back strains, mm-hmm. how are those similar or more different than a sprain? Uh, very similar in, in the terms of how they show up and how they present. Pain is the hallmark characteristic of all of them. Now, the pathophysiology is a little bit different and the rehabilitation may be a little bit different. So the, the strains that involve muscles tend to require a little bit more therapy, take a little bit more time to heal. Uh, And sometimes you have to go slow early on because you can't do a lot of aggressive strengthening if the muscle itself is aggravated. So the presentation is usually pretty similar. However, the rehabilitation treatment may be slightly different depending on the exact location and what's involved. Which which of these injuries are gonna need surgery from an expert like yourself? Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of strains and sprains are treated without surgery initially. So we tend to want to do everything we can, give it time, rest, modify activities, physical therapy, those sort of things. And then those that continue to be a problem after non-operative treatment tend to be the ones that that go to surgery. Probably the most classic example would be the rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, and and sometimes we can tell early on based on the severity of the injury, how likely they are to be successfully treated without surgery and those that need surgery. That's probably the most common. But really the hallmark is, they fail to get better with a very comprehensive course of non-operative management. Well, let's wrap this up with what should people do after they notice that they've got a sprain or a strain, or uh, I imagine that there's an ice pack somewhere in there, There but uh, probably a little bit more detailed than that. Sure, sure. (laughs) So I'd say uh, tip number one, stop. Whatever you're doing, (laughs) don't keep doing it. Uh, We find commonly, yeah, I felt something pop in my shoulder. So I kept going, and then I couldn't lift my arm. You know, and maybe had they stopped the first time, maybe this would have been something small rather than something large. So I tell you, whatever activity it is that caused the injury, stop doing that activity. Give it a few days. Ice is fantastic. Anti-inflammatories are also a good idea as long as you're, you're okay to take those if your physician says it's okay for you to take them. And I recommend rather than taking them intermittently kind of here and there once every few days, take them on a scheduled basis for a few days to see if you can kind of get ahead of the inflammation and get that to calm down. So really rest, ice, modify your activities, anti-inflammatories, and then just kind of be smart and then slowly and gradually increase your activities after that. Did you have another question? Um, Well, I was just curious, any new innovations in surgery for these things at all? Yeah, absolutely. So inside and outside of surgery, honestly. So a lot of things that we're doing, that there are the the area kind of in between non-operative treatment and surgery, kind of the whole regenerative medicine field is really exploding. Mm. So we're really starting to find out wh- which uh, different types of treatments can we use, things like PRP, platelet-rich plasma, mm-hmm. our stem cells, those sort of mm-hmm. things. And we're really starting to figure some of these injuries are very amenable to those types of treatments. Mm-hmm. Others aren't. So we're still sorting out which is which. Uh, so that's an area I think it's going to grow a lot. And hopefully, if we can continue to, to hone the indications for that, maybe we reduce the, the numbers that need surgery. And then for us on the surgical side of things, we're constantly trying to improve uh, – improving different surgical techniques, devices to fix these uh, tendons back to the bones, ligaments back to the bones, 
and also adding these biologic adjuncts to the surgery to try to improve the healing process and speed up the healing process if we can. But not yet a time machine to go back and prevent my terrible answer. Unfortunately not. No, no. (laughs) All right. We've been talking, I'll keep waiting. Okay. (laughs) We've been talking about strains and sprains with Mayo Clinic orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Christopher Camp. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Camp. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure.